Okay, we should be good to go. Thanks again, everyone who came. Um, I did have a request specifically to talk about some geometry topics, and so we're going to be doing some of the angle topics. There's actually a lot to do with angles on the OGT. There's a lot of things we can talk about. So when we're talking about angles, first we need to know how do we actually name an angle. So there's a couple of different ways. The first way is to use three letters, and that will tell us our angle name. If they said angle A, B, E. Angle A, B, E is starting at A, going to B, and ending at E. So it's this space in between the two lines. Angle A, B, E is this space. The center of this angle always has to be the pointy part, this vertex. Another way they can name it is they could just put a number or a letter inside. If we wanted to name it angle one, we could just have a one inside and that's calling it angle one. Or we could change this and say X is inside and we could label it angle X. So there's a couple of different ways to actually talk about these angles. So we have to know each of these ways so we know what we're looking for. I'm going to clear a little bit of this out so that we have the picture without the writing on it. So we can have a lot of different setups with lines to form different kinds of angles. The different lines, when they cross, form something called vertical angles. So vertical angles are when two angles are across from each other. So this angle ABE and this angle CBD are congruent. They're the same. When the lines intersect like this, those two are always the same. So if angle ABE is 41 degrees, we've given it an actual measure now, how much would angle CBD be? How much would this be? And I was like, well, I still have to send the message. There's no point. 41, good, they're the same. Those two measures are always the same. The same thing goes for the top and the bottom. This angle is congruent to this angle. So if I said the top was 139 degrees, how many degrees would the bottom angle be? Which we could call DBE if we needed to. Yeah, 139. Good. It's the same. So this vertical angle situation is the ones, I call them across from each other. They're either the left and right or the top and bottom. They're the same angle measure. So that's one setup. A second setup is complementary. And even if you can't remember the names, most of the time you need to be able to recognize the picture and not the name. It's good to have the names memorized, but the picture, understanding what this picture tells us to do is way more important. So complementary angles are when we have an angle that's 90 degrees. You'll see this symbol in red here, kind of looks like a square. This means the entire angle from start to finish, that includes angle one and angle two, that entire space is 90 degrees, which they'll sometimes call a right angle. Both of those mean the same thing. 90 degrees and calling something a right angle is the same. It's that sharp corner. So when you have complementary angles, this time they add up to that angle measured. Angle one, this time it's labeled as a one and a two. Angle one and angle two, those add up to be 90 degrees. So in the question for this one, 
instead of actually writing in the angle measure on the picture, they told us down here. It says if B, and then it says M angle one. M, you say yeah. measure of angle one. So once we have, yeah. That so M just stands for it. There's an actual degree measure for angle one. And that is 63 degrees. So angle one is 63 degrees. And they want us to find the measure of angle two. So this time they're not the same. Angle two isn't necessarily 63. It's not the same. This time they add up to 90 degrees. So 63 degrees plus whatever angle two is. We don't know what angle two is. I'm just going to put a question mark. We don't know what it is. That is 90. So we've got to figure that out. What do you guys think that angle two would measure? What do we have to add to 63 to come out with a 90 degree measure? Good. 90 minus 63 would give us 37. So 90 minus 63 would give us 37 degrees for angle 2. And instead of putting a question mark, we could have also used our variable. That's the purpose of a variable. We could say 63 plus x equals 90. And then we can do opposite opera operations like we've learned with our equations. 63 is adding to x, so we subtract it. And that's where we get the 90 minus 63. So I did see someone say 27. You do have to be really careful. That's a super common thing. Oh, hold on. Maybe I wasn't careful enough. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for correcting me. 90 minus 63, and this is why we should always use a calculator. Okay. Always use a calculator. 27. It is super easy to be off by a factor of 10. Our minds want to say 9 minus 6 is 3, and then 10 minus 3 is 7, so it gives you 37. But, as someone pointed out, this should actually be 27. Thank you for the correction. And it's, like I said, it's a super common, easy mistake to make because you can easily be off by that factor of 10 because our brain says 9 minus 6 when really, if we're doing this by hand, we have to borrow, so it's 8 minus 6 to get it to. Um, and for the most part, I want you guys to stay muted unless you're actually answering a question. That way we don't have the feedback where you can hear me talking in the background while I'm talking. Okay, um, right. how do I get rid of that 37? Let me erase it. It's not part of the page anymore. Okay. So, now we have supplementary. We talked about vertical angles. Vertical were the same. We talked about complementary. Complementary were 90. Now we're going to talk about supplementary. Supplementary is 180 degrees when you're on an entire straight line. This is 180 degrees. And let me explain why and where this all came from in the first place. Um, You'll see me drawing these arcs, and they look circular, because angles are all based off of looking at a circle. You have a starting point in the circle, and you say, how far am I going around this circle? An entire circle, they decided, was 360 degrees. Um, in the past, they didn't know that there was like, I think it's 365 days in a year. It's 364 or 365. Their only accurate measurement, they thought it was 360. So they named a circle, because that's one entire turn around the world, 360. And if you cut that in half, which makes that straight line across, 
360 divided by 10 is 1 8. So that's where it all comes from. That's why this is 1 8. So again, we're doing something similar to complementary. Now let's actually solve this problem now that we know where it came from. So complementary added up to be 90. This time, when we want to find the measure of A, B, D. So start at A, go to B, end at D. We want this space, which we don't currently know. We're going to involve that 24. That space, which I'm going to call X, get our variables involved, plus the 124. Instead of just being equal, vertical, we've just said, oh, exact same measurement. Instead of being equal, they add up to 180 degrees. So how can we find A, B, D? What do we do with the 124 and the 180 this time to get it, get that extra angle measure we're looking for? Subtract. Good. So 180 minus the 124. We do subtraction. Again. Okay. This time I'm going to be careful. I'm going to plug it into my calculator. Like I said, it's super easy to be off by that factor of 10. So 180 minus the 124 is 56. I would say instead of compressing, you can say and that's our final answer. And I said x equals 56. Technically, the question said measure of ABD, of angle ABD. But we called it x just to make it easier to work with in that equation. So we have vertical, complementary, supplementary. We also have parallel lines cut by a transversal. So when you have parallel lines cut by a transversal, we actually have a lot of different angles here. These two lines form eight angles. There are eight different angles formed here. And if they don't actually say in the sentence somewhere, these are parallel, you might see little arrow marks on the line that we filled in. Those arrow, arrow marks mean these are parallel. There's a lot of symbolism and stuff in geometries. Part of geometry is just learning what's the notation? How do we get this to work? So with all these different angles, there's two situations. You can either have congruent angles, so the same again. Or you can have the situation where you're supplementing, where you add to 180. And since there's so many angles, so many of them can be congruent to each other and so many of them can be supplementary, we have to be able to interpret this picture and look for all the different groupings. So like angle two. Angle two is right here. It's a smaller sized angle. Um, specifically, when you're less than 90, we call this an acute angle. I saw a couple people join. I'm going to just write a little message to make sure they can hear. So, acute angles are a smaller size. When you're less than 90 degrees, you are acute. And I don't know if someone has a question or not. I think she's just trying to figure out how to get the sound. Um, so acute angles, all the other acute angles are also going to be congruent. If angle two is acute, what's another angle measure that 
will give you the same. Like let's say angle two is 43 degrees. What other angles are also 43? Which other ones are also the same angle measure? Seven is also acute, that is one of them. Seven would also be 43 degrees. What's another one? There's two more. Six is another one. Six is also 43 degrees. It's the same. And three. Good. All of these are all the same angle measure. Is that how you your wife? So those are all congruent. All the obtuse angles are also all congruent. Of tooth is bigger than 90. So this would be 137 degrees. What other angles are also 137 degrees? Doing well, how are you? Eight would also be 137. Five. Okay. Five is also 137. Good. There's one more. Picture's getting kind of confusing. One is 137 and four is 137. Good. So we'll notice then that the obtuse and the acute together add to 180. 137 plus 43 is 180. So if I gave you the same setup, and this time we're not going to look at every single angle. We don't always label all eight. They could, but they don't have to. I said we have two parallel lines. Let's say one angle is 34 degrees. And I want you to find this angle. I'm just going to label it X. So find the measure of X. Yeah. So you just have to decide, is X going to also be 134, or is it going to be supplementary? Is it going to add to 180? So what do you guys think? Should X be exactly the same, or should it add to 180? <laughs> So we have one for the same. Anyone else want to give an opinion over the chat? Do you think it's the same or it should add to 180? Okay, so now we have someone saying, well, I think it's adding to 180. So we've got both opinions. It's harder to tell. It's harder to tell when... Um, they're in just random spots. So we always look at the size. So 34 is acute. It's a small size. Is X acute or obtuse? Is it big or small? Okay. Okay. Acute is a small angle. Acute is. Sorry, I was looking at 34 degrees. Oh, 34 is acute. What about X? X is obtuse. It is obtuse. So when you have two different sizes, instead of being congruent, then it should be the add to 180. The x plus the 34 equals 180 degrees. So what is the measure of x? What do we do to get x? One eighty minus thirty-four. Good. We do subtraction again. When you yeah. have this addition set up, we've got to do the opposite and subtract. And what do we get then uh, for wait, our angle? Is, sure. um, what do we get for one eighty minus the thirty-four? Um, that'll be the next one forty-six. 
Well, so the state of Michigan requires yep. 146. Sometimes we'll get some overlap because we have chat answers um, and verbal answers. The program, yeah. And if you're ever unsure, just plug it into your calculator. 180 minus 34 gives us the 146. Um, like I said, it's really, especially with these kinds of problems, it's really easy to be off by that factor of 10. You need to say 156 or 126. Get credit. Or sorry, 136 would be the other factor of 10. So we learned our four. Let's recap our four. We have vertical. When they're across from each other and they're the same. So like if this is 40, this is 40. We had our complementary. Okay. Which was 90. So I am going to send you an email from my. These added to be 90 degrees. Um, and get a copy of your transcript. We had and our supplementary. Um, if you get a copy, you can forward them to my email here. Um, or if they need to fax them, my fax number Which is, is the straight email. line, which is 180 um, if you degrees. Do have some facts, will you please, and we um, had our parallel lines. We get a ton of feedback, or we get a ton of facts with you, oh, I just want to know. that wrong. Two L's. Parallel. Um, with a transversal. So parallel were the two lines that didn't cross. Sorry, it's getting kind of low. The two lines that didn't cross, and the transversal is that third line that cuts through it. And parallel had both situations. It had yeah, some congruent, so, uh, some agree. 180. The state, so there's no cost to you. So, when they give you a situation, usually they have, you'll notice the picture I had up originally, there's a lot going on here. There's more than we need. There's all this extra angles on the bottom, but they've only labeled this top part, the 2x and the x minus 3. So when you have this kind of setup, what I like to do is draw only the parts we need. Yeah, there's a lot going on, but if I only draw the 2x and the x minus 3, now it's easier to identify. So which situation is this? Is this vertical, complementary, supplementary, or parallel? How long it will take you is just going to depend on how many credits you need and how fast you can get your work done. Parallel? Yep. So parallel, we needed two lines that don't cross and then a third. It's the top of the parallel, but it's not the entire supplementary again. So this is supplementary. This is adding to 180. So that's the first step with any geometry question is just figuring out which one is it. There's a lot of different situations. So now we know this should add to 180. Now the second part is I did this a little bit differently. The last questions, they all just had angle measures. This time, we have entire expressions, and you'll notice that there are parentheses around this one. The parentheses aren't super necessary. Um, it's just a way they do the notation, so sometimes I forget they're even there. You can basically ignore the parentheses. But this time, instead of just being able to do that subtraction, we have to set up an entire equation, and we're going to have to do our opposite operations. These ones are more complicated. Um, and they have to give us some instructions like find x. So we've got to set up an equation to find x. We're going to take each piece and add them together. We know the two angles added together equal 180. It is just like, so I'm going to go back to our supplementary page really quick. It's just like we set up here. Nope, sorry, complementary. Supplementary. We set up x plus 24 equals 180. It's just a little more complicated this time. Too fast. So we had to do the 2x plus x plus 3, or sorry, plus x minus 3 equals 180. So now we've got to go through the process of solving this equation. This is a more complicated equation to solve. When we're solving equations, 
our first step is to always combine any license terms we have. They can't seem to figure it out. Yeah. Community college. Yeah. yeah. And I don't want to be annoying, so yeah. I just hang out at the computer. So our equal sign, we've talked about equations once, but if you weren't there or it's been a while, I'm going to try and go through this in a lot of detail again. The equal sign splits it into our two sides. We have some stuff on the left, some stuff on the right. On the left, we do have some like terms. When we say like terms, those are things with the same variable. So 2x and x are like <laughs> terms. And if we're combining them together, we're doing whatever operation they tell us to. They tell us to add the 2x plus the x. So what is 2x plus x? No way. You're crazy. So one thing you have to remember when adding these is that if there's no number here, we can put a 1. So really we're asking what's 2x plus 1x? Good. 3x. When you add those like terms, you only add the numbers in front. So those two combined to be the 3x. We don't need any of that anymore because it became 3x. But everything else, we haven't done any combining, so we still write it out. I'm going to scroll down a bit so we have some room to write. So we've combined the like terms. We need to do opposites. And when we do our opposites, we almost always, it's like 98% of the time, we do the opposite of addition or subtraction first. So right now we are subtracting 3. What is our opposite of minusing the 3? 3x plus 3. Okay, plus 3. But we're only focusing on the minus 3 itself, so we're not even thinking about the, plus, or the 3x right now. What we're doing is we're saying we're going to plus 3 on the opposite side. When we do that opposite and add it, it gets rid of just the minus 3. So we do that addition, and 180 plus 3 is 183 and we bring the 3x down. So working with our equations again, that can be more complicated. There's a lot of steps with equations. Um, yep. yep. So if you, and we're still not quite done, we know we're done when we get down just to x. Finished when we have just x. So we need one more step. And we'll keep practicing equations as we go through a lot of different topics because they're used a lot. So now we have the three touching the x. We need to know the opposite of this when we have the three touching the letter. And to figure out the opposite, we have to remember one thing. Good, I do see someone who said the opposite already and that's to divide. So three, touching the x is actually multiplication. They don't write it in, but that is 3 multiplied by x. So that means the opposite is division. Dividing by 3 will get rid of just the 3 in front of the x. So 183 divided by 3 is 61. And that's one I didn't even want to try and do my head. Calculators are great for things like that. Okay. So again, we're going to be practicing with a lot of equations for the rest of our problems because they're used a lot in these angle type questions. Any questions so far? Anything you'd want me to go over again? I know these equations can be pretty difficult because there's so many steps. Um...
Okay. So unless I see anything, I'm going to move to the next problem. So I used the same picture. But this time, even if they give us the same instructions to find x, they put stuff in different spots. This isn't necessary, necessarily supplementary. So again, if you're having trouble with the entire picture, focus on the part that's actually labeled. We have our 2x and our 3x. And we have those four basic situations, vertical, where they cross, supplementary that adds to 180, complementary that adds to 90, and parallel. So which situation do we have? Complementary. Good. These ones will add to 90 degrees. So again, we've got to set up a whole equation based off of knowing this is complementary. The pieces inside, the 2x, and technically I should have written it with parentheses and the degree mark next to it. Those will be there. I forget all the time because they don't actually affect anything we do. So 2x plus the 3x should equal 90. So now we do that equation solving again. We want to combine any like terms, if we have them. If there's no like terms, sometimes you skip. On this one, are there any like terms to combine? Should we combine like terms or can we skip to the next step? So eventually we will divide. I think that might be from the last problem actually. Um, eventually we will divide. That's usually a step. Right now, are there any like terms? Are there anything that have the same variable? Good. 2x and 3x. Those are like terms. They both have the letter x, which means we can combine them. And it tells us to add them. So what do we get when we do 2x plus 3x? Five x. Two plus three gives us five. Good. So now we do our opposites. Last problem we had to do an addition opposite. This time we don't have any add or subtract. So if we have five next to the letter x, what's our opposite? So we are working with the 5, but are we going to add it, subtract it, multiply, or divide? So there we go. Divide by the 5. Doing 90 divided by 5 gets rid of that 5 in front of the x. And again, we go to our calculator, and that gives us 18. Okay. So one more. We have our setup. Again, I used the same picture to show how they could take the same picture. And depending on what they give you, you're going to have to attack it a different way. And I'm going to change one more thing. Instead of saying find x, I'm going to say find the measure of, I should have given these names. I'm going to have to write in some letters really quick so they give us names. So let's say they said find the measure of angle ABC. 
if they change those instructions a little bit, you're still going to find X. You've got to find X first. Then you're going to have to plug it back in to find ABC. So let's take out the pieces that are not useful to us. We don't really need that extra line at the bottom because it makes it easier to look at. So now that we're looking at it, what situation is this? We had vertical, complementary, supplementary, or the parallel lines with a transversal. Vertical. This is our vertical angles. Good. So vertical angles didn't add to 90, didn't add to 180. They were congruent, which is just a fancy way of saying they're the same or equal. So this is set up a lot differently. The other ones we did, addition equals 90 or addition equals 180. This one, we just say they equal each other. So because they were vertical, we knew they were congruent. And because we know they're congruent, we know we just put an equal sign. So again, our ultimate goal is to find the measure of angle ABC, but we have to find X first. So on our other equations, we had some like terms to combine. We still want to look for those, but this is one where we're not going to have any like terms to combine. It's just something we shouldn't forget when we're working through the problem. There's the 10x on the left and the 15x on the right. If they're on opposite sides, they can't just combine. Combine like terms only works for if there's a whole bunch of stuff on the left or a whole bunch of stuff on the right. So we can't combine like terms. So this time we skip it. So now we need to do our opposites again. So if we're doing opposites, we need to actually, this again is a different setup. We have X's on the left and on the right. We need to do the opposite of our 15X. Solving equations when there's a variable on the left and a variable on the right, we've got to do the opposite of positive 15X and minus. So equations, you have to be so flexible because they can be set up so many different ways. That's why I just say opposites and don't give a more, um, or more specific direction because it depends on how the equation is set up. So opposite of positive 15 is minus 15. And we actually do that now. So what do we get when we do 10x minus 15x? Okay. Yeah. Um, so no, that's not the exams that you're supposed to take. It's just how many points test is being on. 5x. Very, very close. We need to make one small change. Because the 15, get, it's a negative. Because the bigger number was minus, the answer should be minus. Or, because our brains are sometimes not reliable, plug it into a calculator. It's easy, even if you've done math for a long time. I make mistakes like that all the time because I forget that little tiny detail. There's so many details to remember. So that's why it's better to just plug it into the calculator to be safe. It helps you not make as many of those little tiny mistakes. So now we have to do another opposite. This time we're going to focus on the positive 32. So what's the opposite of adding 32? I know, but their quarter class is not, the quarter means that they're 25. Subtraction, good. We want to minus the 32, always on the opposite side. 
So negative 3 minus 32. Again, a calculator can be super helpful. Um, gives us negative 35. So now we just have one last opposite. We have a negative 5 in front of the x. What's the opposite we need to do for that negative 5? Last opposite to do. Divide. Good. This can be a tricky one, especially when there's that minus sign. A lot of people will want to say add five because they see a minus sign immediately. You're like opposite. Add. Good. But because it's negative five multiplied by x, we're actually doing the opposite of multiplication, which is division. So that gives us positive 7. And again, if you need to plug it into a calculator, you're out first. It gives us that positive 7. Now, on all the other problems that said to find x, you're done. We found x because this asked us to find the measure of A, B, C. We have an extra step. We need to plug it in to find the measure of A, B, C. So A, B, C starts at A, goes to B, ends at C. That's that 10x plus 32 information. We're going to replace x with the number 7. So 10 multiplied by 7 plus the 32. Now we just need to simplify this We're using our order of operations skills right now, or plug it into a calculator. So order of operations says to do the multiplication first. 10 times 7 is 70. Um, then add the 32. 70 plus 32 is 102. So the actual measure of ABC is 102 degrees. Now I did make this problem up myself, and you'll notice I made a little mistake. 102 doesn't make sense with our picture. Our picture shows that this is acute. This is obviously less than 90. They will not make that kind of mistake on the OGT. If you got this answer on the OGT, you would be like, wait a minute, my picture looks like that spot is acute. You want to... Yep, ABD looks like 102. I should have, I just made up equations that I knew would work out. I should have probably put the 10x plus 32 up here and the 15x minus 3 down here. But that's because I'm only one person. On the OGT, they have multiple people that check everything so that stuff like this doesn't happen. And I did want to do a parallel line one, but I forgot to draw it in. So let's go ahead and have... 3x minus 7 and 2x plus 1. There we go. Okay, sounds good. So, parallel lines cut by a transversal. I did change the tilt of the transversal, but that doesn't change anything. Um, and let's find x. So we have to decide there were two situations. There's either they're the same, they are congruent, or they both or they add to 180. And we have to decide which one is it. Um, if you, oh, I think I heard someone say they are congruent, and that is correct. They're the same. Um, in school, if you studied this then they probably gave you a whole bunch of names like um, alternate interior, same side interior, same side exterior. Um, we don't really need to know those names. We just need to know, hey, these are congruent. So when things were congruent, how did we set up our equation? 
What does congruent mean as a math symbol? Because supplementary adding to 180 meant put a plus sign, then an equal 180. Congruent. What math symbol do we use for congruent? All right, thank you so much. Okay. It's similar to our vertical angles. Go ahead. Addition is the supplementary and complementary. We've seen a lot of addition today. Congruent was like our vertical angles. Let's see if I can get back to that page. Yep. So when our vertical angles, which were congruent, we used an equal sign. This is supplementary, sorry. One more page. I lost the page with our vertical angles. It was actually the problem we just did. This problem. With our vertical angles, all we did was put an equal sign. Congruent means use an equal sign. But addition is basically everything else we did today. So that's why it's easy to forget that sometimes all you do is put an equal sign in between. So when we had this situation, when they were congruent, we didn't end up combining any like terms, but we did have to do an opposite of our variable. This is a positive 2x, a plus 2x, and we had to minus the 2x. So 3x minus 2x, what does that give us? Can we do that opposite? Go ahead. 1x. Good. 3 minus 2 gives you 1. Good. And I saw someone in the chat as well also gave us 1x. Okay. So that was our first opposite. What's our next opposite? What opposite should we do next? Divide will come, but divide is not next. Divide is last. So division is part of the process, just not yet. Okay. Plus is close, but we don't want to plus the one. What number should we add to the other side? Because it's got to be the opposite of what is currently being subtracted. So what's the opposite of what's currently being subtracted? Good. Plus the seven. Good. We add that seven over. So always relate it to what's actually being put with the number. The seven is the one being subtracted. We have to add it over. Which is eight. And then we already know the final step. We said we need to do division. We just don't divide yet. Now we need to divide by one. No, something we didn't talk about much today is multiple choice. A lot of the questions on the OGT are multiple choice. If they gave us this problem and they said to find X, and they gave us some multiple choice answers. Sometimes we can use our answers to help out at least. So even if you can't figure out exactly the right answer, sometimes you can do some elimination. So what we can do is we can actually take our answer choices and we can say, I'm going to substitute it in and see what we get out. This might help me figure out if this would be correct or not. 
So like for this first one, 2x plus 1, we could do 2 times 5 plus 1. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11. So that's saying this angle should be 11 degrees. 11 degrees is really, really tiny. That's a super small angle. Not a lot of space between the lines. So I would say that this is probably not 11 degrees. With this kind of method, like I said, it's only going to help you eliminate. It's not necessarily going to help you find exactly what the correct answer is. So 2 times 8 is 16, plus 1 is 17. That's also pretty small, but it might be feasible for this picture. 2 times 28 plus 1 is, let me plug this one in since the numbers are getting bigger, is 57. So 57 is starting to get, to get bigger. That might work. So again, I'd say A is probably not the answer, but maybe B, maybe C. And then we could check D. Two times 56 plus one is 113. That's way too big. I know for sure it's not D. 113 should be acute, or sorry, 113 should be obtuse, and our angles are clearly acute. So now we have more of a chance of getting the correct answer just by guessing. If you're only choosing from two options instead of four, it can help you maybe have a higher chance of getting the answer. So those are all the problems I had prepared today. Um, we do still have about nine minutes if you want to see another type of problem or if you have any requests for what we talk about next time. Is there any specific topics you might like to see in our next session on Thursday? Algebra. Some more algebra, okay. Let me write myself a note. Any other requests So some more geometry? Okay, we have a little bit of both. Geometry. And we have until June. I'm going to be doing two sessions every week until the actual OGT. Um, so I'll try and finish or fit in as much as possible. And the good thing about geometry is sometimes you'll see these equations like we did. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just make up one more, just so we get the practice. It's good to have practice. So we had our four basic situations again, vertical, complementary, supplementary, parallel. I'm going to say find x. And parallel was really two situations on its own, either congruent or supplementary. What is this one? Is this vertical, <laughs> complementary, supplementary, uh, or one of our parallel steps? Um, like uh, um, oh, and I just um, uh, saw the other messages. I apologize. Uh, when is the OGT? I do not know that. Our testing coordinator, coordinator, Amy, is in charge of all figuring out, because everyone's in a different part of Ohio. Um, so... You might be able to just go along online and pick a date, but it kind of depends on where you actually live in Ohio. So that's a question for Amy. If you email Amy at amy.right.graduationalliance.com and ask her that, she can help you because she knows where all of you are located and what the specific testing situation is for you for where you're located. Yeah, it's probably the first or second week in June. Um, everyone tests pretty close to each other, but it depends on what school district you're in um, and what city you're in. So she's the one in charge of that. Um, so back to the question, though. Sorry to interrupt, but I just saw those chat messages. On this question, 
which way should we set it up? Vertical, complementary, supplementary, or parallel lines set up? Vertical. Vertical. Okay. I did this one kind of just to trick you. We do have two lines crossing, and that's our vertical situation. But vertical angles are always across from each other. If the 3x minus 5 was here with the 42, that would be our vertical setup. This is sometimes why I take away the lines that don't matter. If I draw it with just the lines that are used to make the 42 and the 3x minus 5, now what situation is it? Supplementary. It adds to 180. So you have to be careful about that because they love doing pictures that look like one, but if you take away that extra line, it's actually another. So this time we do addition and it equals 180. I'm going to move Amy's email so that we have enough room to write this up. So this time, our life terms are different. On all the other ones, we had a couple of x's. This time, on the left, we have two numbers without x. So the negative 5 plus 42 is something I'm going to type into a calculator to help this up. Negative 5 plus 42 is 37. So once we combine like terms, we move on to our opposites. What's our opposite we should do first? The seven countries that voted against China, Iraq, Israel, Libya, Sorry, I didn't hear you. So we are going to work with the 37. What do we do to the 37? Good. Good. Subtraction. Good teamwork. So we subtract the 37. 180 minus 37 gives us 143. And then we have one more opposite. What's our last opposite? Divide. Divide by three. Good. So 143 divided by three is 47.666. So at the end it shows a seven. That's just because we can't keep writing sixes forever. They have to stop somewhere. So on a question like this, not only would they have to say find x, they'd have to say round to something. I'm going to say round to the nearest tenth. All right. <laughs> so we're going to type in your So that you know where to stop. So if it's 47.666 repeating, and we want to round to the nearest tenth, what would this be rounded? That would be the correct rounding for the nearest whole number. Erica, what were you going to say? I was about to say 48 also. Okay. So that would be if they said round to the nearest whole number. So you're rounding correctly, but not to the right place. If it says the nearest tenth, that's our key word here. That means this is the number that's going to round. Are we going to keep okay. it 47.6 or 47.7? We do round that up to 47.7. So again, you guys rounded correctly. You rounded the 47 up to a 48, but that would be the word round to the nearest whole number. So you do have to watch out. There's also to the nearest hundredth. So round to the nearest whole number would be the correct answer of 48. Round to the tenth is this 47.7. Sorry, these are kind of going everywhere. <laughs> round to the nearest hundredth with a th at the end. Oh, I think there's even a d. Hundredths. Where would that round to? It said round to the nearest hundredths. 
So sorry if you heard my phone off go off in the background. So we still need what's round to the nearest. And that'll be based on. Okay. So the six, six, seven, that one would be thousandths. Hundredths would be just two decimal places. So the only number that rounds is the very last. You don't ever round in the middle. We round that last digit. So 47. Point six seven. That last number you have to decide does that stay a six or does it round up, as Tasha said, to the seven. Forty seven point six seven. That's hundredths. If we did one more, forty seven point six six seven. That is thousand. So each number just tells you what your last number to look at is, or sorry, each wording tells you what the last number is. So whole number, the last number to look at is right before the decimal. Tenths was right after the decimal. Hundredths is two after the decimal. And thousandths is the third after the decimal. So we are out of time today. Thanks so much for joining and for participating. I really appreciate it. Our next one is Thursday at 5 p.m. Um, I'll try and involve, involve some algebra and some geometry since we've had requests for both. Um, you're welcome. And again, if you have any questions, you can send me messages on Remind or email. And if you want to find those testing dates, please email Amy. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day.